Hi everyone, Navichel Tech here. So it's been a minute, but I'm back with the Nintendo Switch. So right in front of me, I have my version one Nintendo Switch. So this is the unpatched Nintendo Switch with the first generation of the Tegra X1 chip. And of course, I've already made numerous videos showing you how I can modify such a Nintendo Switch and install the Atmosphere custom firmware onto it. But recently I got something in the mail and it's right here. So there it is. So this is a Switch OLED, which is pre-modified. So if you don't know, in order to actually be able to run a custom firmware on the Switch OLED or the newer revision of the regular Nintendo Switch or the Switch Lite, you will need to actually modify it through hardware. So the patch in the Tegra X1 sock has been patched. Um, and now you can no longer use the RCM exploit that we used to use for the original version 1 Nintendo Switch. But this one is already modified, so it has the hardware chip installed. So if I boot it up without an SD card, you will see, you'll get this message. So there's actually a Raspberry Pi micro uh, computer installed into it. And here you can see it says no SD card because yeah, <laughs> I've just received the Switch and I still need to modify it. In this video, I would like to show you how I can do so. Install the Atmosphere custom firmware as well as the tinfoil shop because there is a new great package available for your Switch that we can use in order to actually run a custom firmware and also get the tinfoil shop up and running, get the signature patches and also get some useful homebrew utilities. So if you get this message on your Switch and you're wondering, well, what's the easiest way to actually modify my Switch and run a custom firmware, then this is the video for you. So what you will need is of course a Nintendo Switch. So it can either be the Switch OLED, the regular Switch or the Switch Lite, which is hardware modified and which shows this message up and boot. Then I recommend you picking up a micro SD card adapter if you don't have one already and a micro SD card. So I will have links in the video description if you don't have either of those. I recommend at least a 64 128 gig micro SD card, but just for this tutorial purpose, I will be using a 32 gig micro SD card. Just keep in mind that if you use a very small micro SD card of let's say 8 or 16 gigs, then this tutorial may not work since we actually want to create a backup of our NAND storage. So, and the NAND of the Switch OLED is 64 gigs. So that's why we need at least 64 gigs, but I recommend at least 128. So if you have a micro SD card, any SD card adapter, um, you will actually need to plug it into your PC and we will download one very easy to install package. So let's go ahead and switch over to our PC right now. So on your PC, the first thing that you want to do is format your micro SD card. So you can either use Windows File Explorer for that or a tool like Mini Tool Partition. So in my case, mine is already formatted. So I will just show you. I recommend you to format it to FAT32 since FAT32 or XFAT actually is uh, known to be corrupted on the Nintendo Switch. So your micro SD card may fail if you select the XFAT option. Just use FAT32, regular cluster size, and then you can format your micro SD card. And if you don't see the FAT32 option, then I recommend you to switch over to the Mini Tool Partition Wizard. So just Google search Mini Tool Partition and you will find it. And then you can format it to FAT32. Then you want to head over to this link, which I will also drop in the video description. And this is actually a new GitHub page for the HATS files. And HATS, it actually stands for Hackety. Atmosphere, tinfoil and signature patches. It also includes, as I said, some nice to have homebrew utilities, which I will also show you in a second. Um, but just go ahead, go to the release page and download the latest version. And here you can also see what is included. And the nice thing is that it also includes uh, the 90 DNS setup. So if you don't know what that means, that um, it actually allows you to connect your switch to the internet without connecting your switch to the Nintendo services. So if you're running a custom firmware, you can still access, for example, the tinfoil shop or use your switch as an FTP server for a PC and drag and drop files over the network. Um, and the DNS server actually allows you to block all connections to Nintendo services so that you can still connect to the internet without the risk of getting banned. So that's really nice to have. So just make sure to download the latest hats file right here. So it's this zip file, which I've already downloaded and placed on my desktop. So what you want to do is you want to copy all these files that are included right here and drop them onto your micro SD card. 
and shouldn't really take that long. It's around 400 megabytes. So depending on the speed of your micro SD card, this may either take a few seconds or a few minutes. And as you can see, my micro SD card is not the fastest. So for me, it will take a minute and a half. So once this is done, I will come back to you. So now all files that are needed to actually run the atmosphere custom firmware have been transferred over to the micro SD card. So you can simply eject the micro SD card from your PC, grab the card and insert it into your Nintendo Switch. So I will do so for right now. And now that we have the micro SD card back into our Nintendo Switch, we can simply power it up. And this should boot us into the Hackety bootloader interface. You can set the date and time, but it's not really necessary. And this is the homepage of Hackety. And the first thing that I recommend you to do is actually make a backup of the internal NAND storage. So in case something goes wrong when we run a custom firmware, then you can still restore a backup um, and be up and running again. So to do so, you want to head over to tools. You want to go ahead, go to backup MUMMC or EMMC, sorry. And now you want to do a full backup of EMMC and boot zero and boot one. So make sure to hit that option. And that process may take a while because as I said, the NAND storage of the Nintendo Switch OLED is 64 gigs and it will back up the full 64 gigs to your micro SD card. So that's also why I recommend you to grab at least a 128 gig micro SD card. I won't do this process. I've already done so on a separate micro SD card, which I have right here. So I already got the backup. So just make sure to do so. And then you can uh, transfer over the backup folder from the micro SD card to a safe location somewhere on your PC. And then you have a backup at hand in case something goes wrong. So then you can close out of this menu. Then you can go back to home. And now what we want to do is we want to set up an MU MMC partition. So if you don't know what this means, this means that we actually create a copy of our NAND onto our micro SD card, and then we will boot our custom framework from our micro SD card. So that way we do not touch our internal storage and we can still boot to our internal storage to play our games online. So for example, if you've bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you can still connect to the Nintendo Switch servers on the official firmware. And then if you want to mod some games or whatever, you can go ahead, boot to the custom firmware on your micro SD card. And since this also includes, as I said, the 90 DNS servers, it will block all connections to the Nintendo Switch server. So what you want to do, you want to go ahead, go back to tools, go to partition micro SD card, Go to OK, and it will also back up our files before actually partitioning uh, our micro SD card. And then for the MUMMC RAW, you can drag it to 12 gigs, or you can create the full backup. So it should be just drag it across all the way. If you want to have a full backup, but 12 gigs is enough. And since I have a 32 gig SD card, I will do so. So your files will be backed up and restored. Hit start. And just wait for a few seconds and then it will show a pop-up that we need to press the power button so press power to continue so i will do so and now it will first of all create a backup of all the files that we've copied over to a micro sd card so the atmosphere hackety and tinfoil files and then it will start partitioning the micro sd card and restore all those files back to the micro sd card and then afterwards we can actually create the mu mmc partition and boot our switch to the custom firmware so it may seem a bit overwhelming, but it's actually a really easy process. So I will just wait for the partition manager to do its job and then we'll continue from there. So now it says state is done. So it has partitioned on micro SD card. Then go back, go back. And then what you want to do is go to home, hit MU MMC. And now we want to create an MU MMC. So this way, as I said, it will actually create a NAND backup on a micro SD card, which will be used for a custom firmware. So you go to create MU MMC, select SD partition, and it should see one partition since we've just partitioned our micro SD card in Hackety. So hit part one, and now it will actually copy over the files, the necessary files to our micro SD card and create a shadow of our NAND storage. Um, and since I only hit the 12 gig option, this process goes rather quickly on mine. But if you've selected the full 64 gig uh, NAND backup and partition 
in the partition wizard setup, then this process may take up to an hour, depending on the speed of your micro SD card. But as you can see, in my case, it goes uh, rather quickly. So once this process is uh, completed, I will come back to you. So the switch is almost done with creating the MUMC partition right here and actually copying over all these files. So in my case, it took a little less than two minutes. Then you can close out of this menu and you will see that MUMMC is enabled. If it doesn't show up as enabled, it still shows disabled. Just go to change MUMMC and select the SD raw one partition, then hit OK. Close out of the menu again. And now if you go back, it should say enabled right here. And now we can actually boot to our custom firmware. So I want to go to launch and here you want to select MUMMC custom firmware. So this way you actually boot off the micro SD card. If you use the sys MMC, it will uh, run atmosphere on your internal NAND storage, which I don't recommend since, well, it can lead to a ban if you connect to the Nintendo Switch servers. Uh, it just introduces all kinds of issues because you will have uh, custom firmware files or an NAND storage, which Nintendo can detect. So just use the MU MMC option to boot atmosphere from a micro SD card. You should see the atmosphere logo popping up then a few seconds later, we should see the Nintendo Switch logo. And then afterwards, we should be created by the dock screen of a Nintendo Switch. And then we can actually uh, confirm that we're running the custom firmware on our micro SD card. Because just unlike the Nintendo Switch, go to system settings. And then if you scroll down to system, you will see that we are using the latest version. So I'm running firmware 17.0.1 because that was what, what my official firmware on my internal NAND storage was running as well. Then you'll see AMS, which stands for Atmosphere, version 1.6.2, and the E indicates that we're running it as an MU MMC partition. If you see an S instead of an E, it means that you've booted to the uh, SysNAND custom firmware, so if you boot it on your internal storage, so just reboot your switch, go back to Hackety, and then boot to the custom firmware. So since we're running a custom firmware, we can actually open up the album, which should boot us into the homebrew menu. And here you can see that we we've got some nice utilities. Um, I'm already connected to the internet. So if I go to the 90 DNS testing utility, hit A, you can see that all Nintendo uh, URLs are actually blocked. So that's great. Then I can exit out of this. Now we've got some more uh, really nice uh, utilities included. Daybreak to actually update our firmware. Uh, DBI, which can be used, to, uh, you can use to install files onto your SD card. Uh, Edison, which can be used to make backups of your games, of your save files, and some other uh, nice applications. Of course, you can always go into the Humbrew App Store and download more applications on your Switch, but we're actually interested in the Tinfoil installer. So just simply press A on this, and this should install Tinfoil as an application onto your Switch. So now it already boots to the Tinfoil application, it refreshes it, and now if we go back, you can see that we have Tinfoil installed as a title on our Nintendo Switch. So yeah, that's basically it. And if you're wondering how you can reboot back to official firmware if you want to play your uh, games online, all you have to do is just hold the power button for a few seconds, and to go ahead and go to restart and the restart option should uh, boot, us, boot us back into Hackety and also if you power off your switch power it on it should boot you to Hackety then you want to go to the reboot option in the lower right hand corner and you want to press OFW which stands for the official firmware and this should boot our Nintendo switch to our system storage in our internal NAND storage and using this option, we can access the eShop, we can buy our games and we can play them online. So just to show you, I can unlock my Switch. I'll probably have to wait for a few seconds for it to connect to the internet. So just give it a few seconds right here. Now it's connected. So now we can access, access the eShop, I think. Wait for a few seconds. And since the official firmware does not have any custom firmware files installed on this partition, um, yeah, we don't have the risk of getting banned right now, so that's great. And here you can see that we do have access to the eShop, so we can exit out of that. And now if you want to go back to the custom firmware, again, you can either 
power it off your switch or restart it. Uh, yeah, both ways will actually bring you back into the Hecate uh, bootloader, uh, which is really nice, really nice compared to a, a software modified Nintendo Switch. So if you go to launch, go to CFW MUMMC, this should bring us back to the custom firmware. Um, and yeah, the nice way of a hardware modified Nintendo Switch is that you do not need any paper clips, RCM jigs, uh, payload injectors, whatever. All you need is the uh, hardware mod installed in your Switch, and then you can power off your Switch. Uh, for example, if it runs out of battery, you plug in a, it, you plug in your Switch to a power source, and you'll be greeted by the Hackett bootloader interface without the need of any paper clips or <laughs> RCM clips or jigs or payloads or whatever. It, uh, it should all work. Now we are back in our custom firmware. So if we go to system, again, you can see we have the atmosphere custom firmware. And we do have the home view menu right here. So yeah, that's basically the video for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos, guys. Peace out.